this is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by director, writer, star, multi-faceted uh, <laughs> faceted, um, performer, Justin Chan, who is in town for SIF with Gook, uh, which is a story about the cross-section uh, of several people's lives on the day the Rodney King verdict came down mm -hmm. in uh, just outside of South Central, I guess is technically where the majority of action goes down. Um, I want to start off by talking about that. I mean, it's, it's a great... Um, concept, and I'm just curious how you settled on it. It's one of those things that there's like news coming out all the time. How do you like think to use that event as sort of the basis for a story like that? Mm -hmm. Was it something that was significant to you in your childhood or something like that? Because I think you're about the same age as me, and I was like 13 when all this mm -hmm. went down, and so I have sort of a moderate amount of memory of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was 11, so we're, we were pretty close, uh, and the reason why that particular event I felt like I wanted to use that as uh, the backdrop of the film is my dad had a, a business in Paramount slash like oh, East so Compton this is very much old. yeah so we got looted the last day wow. so the fourth day of, of the riots we got looted um, but this movie happens during the first day yes so you know the you know I don't want to give too much away but the riots are like a backdrop and it you know i think that time and yeah. place give for the, the the social conditions the racial tension and um you know the sort of the the, the kind of uh zeitgeist at that moment uh for this story to take place yeah i mean you're absolutely right i i, I mean i don't want to use the term MacGuffin because that's Probably too broad, but like, yeah, it's it's not an essential element to the story. The story is ultimately these people's sure. intersecting lives, but that is sort of ultimately out there pushing some tension that sort of builds to a breaking point, if you will. Um, it's it's a fascinating thing. I, I, I can tell from your career, it seems like you're sort of shifting into a directing sort of mindset. Is that ultimately where you would like to see your career going, or is this just something you're experimenting with? Or um, I mean, because obviously you're the star of the film as well, uh, so that's yeah. kind of ultimately there also. Yeah. Um, acting is like my first true love. It's like my my main <laughs> bitch. <laughs> so, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm not going to stop acting, but ultimately... There's so many films that I, I act in, and I really don't have a say in the way it's edited, the you know, yeah. everything. Like, and I'm always, I'm like the annoying kid on set that always is bothering the focus <laughs> puller or the DIT, and I'm like, what's your job? And what do you do? And and I just will like hover, and so, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, what I'm trying to sort of reinvent myself. Uh, I want to reinvent myself as just a creator. Um, you know, I can write. You know, I'm, I'm writing. Like, I got hired to write uh, a book adaptation this year, and like, wow. you know, like I think, great, yeah. yeah, I just think that um, life's short, and I don't want to just be in one lane. And now, like with, you know, technology and the way things are going, you just don't want to be pigeonholed into one asset, uh, facet of of the yeah. of the arts. Absolutely. Yeah, fair. and it's just fun. I mean, it's like. My main thing is collaboration, and I just love people who are just good at their job, whatever it is, like cinematography or, or just even like the genie guys who, who move the light. I mean, so I love working with people who are just like really great at what they do. I mean, I, I definitely empathize with all those things you're talking about. Is there any element, I mean, and you did a very good job in it, so maybe it's all kind of a moot point, but you did so many different things mm -hmm. on this project. Is yeah. that something that was something you wanted to do to challenge yourself? Is it wanted to have more control over it? Or, I mean, because it just seems like adding so many different tasks to a project like this could be, I guess, adding to the potential areas where something would go wrong. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a risk because if it sucks... It's all on you. Yeah, it's all on me. <laughs> and also, like, people, like, will probably rip on me, you know, saying, oh, my God, why'd you even do that? But uh, well, for this particular film, it was because I, I knew that there were a few other L.A. Wrights films being made, and I read the hmm. scripts, and I just didn't feel like the Korean-American experience was accurately, accurately portrayed, nor, like you know you know represented in a meaningful way 
So for me, I just uh, it was out of a of a duty, a moral obligation. Um, having been through it, who is a better person to tell the story? No, from, absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's a whole other and, dimension. Yeah, and I also I also think that that it's okay. I I want to see all those other movies, and I tr I truly respect those filmmakers as well. So I'm way I'm dying to see those films. It's just that this is my contribution to to that narrative and that sort of uh, topic. And I, I you know I I think it, it all. It needs to be covered in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I mean, I don't think any sort of shortage of different perspectives hurts by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I mean, I, one of the obvious films that comes to my mind, and I'm sure you've heard this a million mm -hmm. times in talking about this film, is Do the Right Thing. Mm -hmm. um, how does it feel to be, I guess, compared to that film in some ways? And is it kind of annoying to be so, like, just simply sort of attached to a film like that uh, be, just because it's an iconic sort of similar um i mean it can't be annoying i mean you know spike <laughs> is a master and you know even just being in the same sentence as as him is a true honor and you know like i grew up watching his films i'm a huge fan um but it's funny because uh, I purposely did not, uh, because I knew the so, sort of, like, I'm, you know, I'm talking about social sort of things, so I knew that comparison would come up if I did a good job. So I purposely did not watch that film. So you're like, I'm not going to do a good job. Yeah, <laughs> no yeah. comparison. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I purposely did not watch that film. Like, I, yeah. I, but it's so funny how it just bleeds in because, you know, you're just an amalgamation of, of all your experiences and the things you see and the things that influence you. I mean, there's yeah. also that element of just like Hollywood must like everything yeah. must boil down into like a sentence that compares something else. So, you know, exactly like, oh, this is like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it, it's the obvious thing to compare it to but it doesn't feel yeah. necessarily fair to compare either of it's them okay you know unique. i don't yeah i don't mind but but you know the the, the the bigger comparison which is funny is very few fe people have kind of picked up on it is la n you know it's a it's, that yeah. was my that was actually my my sort of reference and sort of what i aspired to make was m closer to that film uh which was also about a, a riot that happened in in, in france uh, early 90s, same time, and it was also shot in black and white. Yeah, I was gonna say that 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 actually is is what it, the first thing when you say that that pops out of my mind. I was like, oh, I wonder, yeah, is that why it was black and white? Is is that the reason why you were just? Uh, it's to sort of an homage. Or yeah, I mean, artistically, or what was the sort of thought beyond that? Yeah, I mean, that movie just blew my mind, and there there was an homage to that. Um, but it was a, it was also an artistic choice because I didn't want people to spend the first 15 minutes of my film dissecting it and seeing if it's period perfect because it is technically a period piece. Right. Yeah. Um, and also, it's just um, you know uh, when I was putting together possible, you know, thinking about it like uh, uh, it, with the colors and stuff, just to get it done right. Uh, with the budget I had, I just didn't feel like it would be that, you know, accurate. So I felt the black and white, you know, I could tell the story in a different way. Well, there's an interesting element, too, of like, there. I mean, part of the film is this notion of racial tension, mm -hmm. and black and white kind of does help proverbially bleed into that. To a I mean, yeah, have you seen American History X? <laughs> Jesus Christ. One of the most disturbing movies I've ever seen. But some of those black and white scenes are oh, like incredibly yeah. powerful. Yeah. And it just, you know what? It, it makes you not look at, at color, actually. I mean, black and white are colors and everything in between. Sure, yeah. But, but it is like a racial film. And that was sort of another thing is like, there's no color in it, you know? Um, so you're just focusing on these human beings um, and their interaction with each other rather than like, uh, yeah, other things like you know, uh, I felt like it was more laser focused on like what I wanted people to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. One of the funny things you mentioned actually was uh, something that I've noticed uh, with another film, uh, Landline, which is at SIF mm -hmm. Two, and uh, it's a film based in 1995. And I think it's kind of funny because you're right; it is technically a period piece. What was it like, sort of trying to work under that guise? Because to me, <laughs> it almost seems more challenging because you know when it's like you know. 1400s or Knights of the Round Table or whatever, it's like, okay, there are only horses, we have armor, shit like that. But yeah. this, it's like very subtle things that are different uh -huh. in terms of like now versus then. Is that something yeah. you really spent a lot of time to avoid? Or was it something you're like, look, I'm going to do the best I can do. Like, there'll be no cell phones, but I'm not going to like spend all day looking at every single thing in the movie. Yeah, I mean, um, 
I tried my best. I didn't have the money to t shut down streets and, and block off streets and have all period perfect cars. But, you know, um, that car that's in the film, the Corolla AE86, is an iconic drift car. Um, so, I, you know, there's things I did. You know, we have pagers in the film. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know um, the way people dress is is 80s and in the music you know um uh not the score but like you know the source music from like stereos and stuff um so i tried my best and um yeah you know i think that's a true test is the first sort of 15 minutes people either are gonna buy it or don't and uh, I haven't heard yet you know one review i think of the film said you know that i saw like some you know some non-period perfect car and i'm like well shit man uh i, I mean, can't it's, it's an indie film like yeah honestly, as you said like this is done uh on a shoestring budget compared to like those like hundred million dollar films yeah so it feels ridiculous to try and grade every single item yeah and you know that was the thing is i wrote it to be lean i wrote it to be you know doable with a smaller budget so it's like i wrote it that way um so i'm hoping that people are paying attention to the right things. No, I mean, I think ultimately the things that stand out to me are, I guess there's the two locations, the convenience store and the liquor store, or sorry, the shoe store and the, the liquor store. Yeah. Um, and then it's mostly just a character study other than that. Like the car, I guess, is important as well, but yeah. like that is what stands out to me. Um, one of the things that's interesting is sort of the the story that's being told about this relationship between these two brothers and this young girl who's not related to them. Um, what was it like in terms of trying to pace that scripting out? Because it's one of those things that you do a, a good job of being subtle of like, oh, here's this girl, uh -huh. sort of here's her relationship to these people, here's their story and how some of this racial tension got to be at least in terms of these two families. H how do you balance like trying to tell that story without like having to be like explicit and be like, look, this person's related to this person, this is yeah. how they're related. Because I, I think it's nice that you sort of are leaving it more understated, but it feels like a lot of film goers these days just want things to just be explicitly like said to them. Yeah, I think uh, going back to what I want people to pay attention to, I think there's certain things that um, are important to uh, the understanding of that relationship and uh, the friendship between you know Eli and Camilla, um, and everything else is just white noise. I mean. It's important, I guess, uh, to a certain degree, but um, that also goes back to what I want people to sort of, I just like, hey, just look at these two for now. And then there's uh, other people who kind of fold in, but, but this is what matters. And I think staying sort of really consistent and true to that through line is what makes a movie effective. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, th I think the interesting thing is sort of deciding when you sort of like, pull that thread in terms of like, because initially you're like, how, why on earth are these two people hanging out with this girl? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's sort of like the most random combination, but there's that little thread that sort of begins to be unraveled or whatever to yeah. one of you is that. Yeah, and I okay. think that's, you know, that's also, you know, this film is just sort of my thoughts on a lot of things that are going on even now and how like 25 years later, <laughs> we start dealing with a lot of the same shit. Yeah. And, and, but like, um, that's my sort of, I'm pointing things out in this film is why can't there be a film about just an Asian guy and this this young black girl's friendship you know and people when I told them initially about the idea people were like that's weird that doesn't make sense and I'm like watch it's well, not I mean, weird I, at all I don't, I don't know at least for me I don't know if it's necessarily that um, aspect of like race that is weird it's the age sex sort of thing oh yeah and that of, was a huge thing that too. kind of like without understanding the backstory you're like this feels like kind of weird yeah. that these two older dudes are hanging out with this like yeah. fairly young girl and that's but, yeah that's sort of uh you know uh was definitely on my mind and a challenge you know but you it's, gotta... it's unfortunate like i mean there's an element to that that like i mean interestingly if you think about like people in the 50s were like, we used to leave our doors unlocked and there's an innocence to it. And just ever since like the internet has come along, there's such a cynicism to the yeah. world that like everyone instantly is like, this feels like an inappropriate relationship yeah. without even understanding the origin of it. And I think, you know, I, I, I definitely set up the film where, where it's not like, they, they, they even they know it's like kind of like not like the most kosher thing to let this girl hang around the store 
because you know there are implications, and sure. that's why in the, the beginning of the film you do see that sort of like resistance. Push her away yeah. to school and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, the title Gook mm -hmm. is going to draw. Uh, I don't know, just attention in general, I guess. Is it uh, just sort of a way that you want to set the tone of the movie? Is it, I don't know, what has the response been to it? Is it divisive to some people? Because the one thing that occurs to me is not really what the title represents, but the fact that it potentially could split the audience who's going to see the movie in terms mm. of the people who are like, oh, I want to see a cultural study versus the people who are like, I know Jaden, like, I don't want to deal with any of that shit or something like that. What has yeah. the response been to that? Um, well, the film is not meant to be sort of have shock value, even though it just does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. But, like, it's not, and, you know, if I think it would be shock value if I didn't explain it in the film. And, you know, um, it was really important to me that, that, and I struggled with it. I was like, is this what I want to call my film? But, this is the nature of, it perfectly encapsulates what this story is. These guys, these two brothers are in an African American neighborhood uh, making money and uh, at the end of the day, they don't necessarily live in that exact neighborhood. I mean, they don't live in, their neighborhood is much nicer, but, but um, so who, what they are in that community at that time, because there's such huge, uh, there was big racial tension between African Americans and Koreans at that time. Yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, I think it's all justified when I explain it in the film. And that word, gook, uh, in Korean, it just means country. Yeah, that was fascinating. Yeah. Like, when that actually is like a bit of dialogue in the movie. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I can't speak for everyone. I certainly did not know that to be. Exactly. Fact. So that's part of, you know, the sort of, if I can, through film, uh, be like, hey, do you even know what this word means? I mean, do you know where the, the origins of this word? It's not, it's not in my language, it's not offensive, but you've made it offensive. And I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna take that power away from that word and, and tell you, explain to you, because once I explain to you what it means, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, if now when you're saying that word to me, you're just saying country, with the, all the social implications, you know, sure. it's how it's said, right? Um, but it's it's conversation, you know, and, and I think that's what great, uh, you know, I'm not saying my film is great, but like that's the films that I like uh, bring up, you know, like conversations afterwards. It's like you leave the theater and then, you know, you go uh, get a beer or get ice cream and you talk with your friends and you talk about the film. And if it stays with you for any length of time and brings up any sort of sort of like, uh, you know, debate or conversation, I think it's. There's the type of films I love, and I think there's yeah, value no, in that. Yeah. I, th I mean, I, and I definitely, I definitely agree with that. I definitely felt that way. I mean, it, it brings, I mean, a whole under interesting thing in terms of like bigotry in general and how that sort of develops. Because like when you say something like that means country, it's like I can't even like extrapolate in my mind, yeah. like how that becomes this really aggressive racial slur, yeah, uh, over the course of time. Like, and you know, also, you know. A lot of Asian people hate that it's called uh, gook. Mm -hmm. I, they they like think it's really offensive. They, and I my my sort of statement to that is, then watch the film. No, understand what you're hating. Understand what you're not liking. Understand what what rubs you the wrong way. And and that's sort of for me is like, I'm okay with that because that is the only way I feel. Uh, in this day and age, a lot of times to get people to at least listen to you. Yeah, listening is definitely a challenge in our society right now, unfortunately. Um, there's also the whole interesting idea of like the power of words and letting words control you. I mean, that's obviously been something like people getting upset about words and the notion that perhaps we shouldn't let words control us. I don't know where I fall on that spectrum. I don't know either, like, to be honest. Yeah. Like they're like I mean, granted, I'm Italian in my origin, like, which is a pretty minor one in the grand scheme yeah. of things. But like when people use the the things like Guido and Dago and stuff like that, is like I have no connection to that such yeah. that I don't feel offended. But yet yeah. people try and use these words to offend. Like, and it's you know, and it's you know, Italians have been in this country a long time now. That's true, yeah. And it's, you know, uh, Asian people... I mean, there I mean you can argue that they, they've been here for a long time as well. But, you know, it's just... That's the conversation. And, and, you know, I think at the end of the day... 
that's what I want is I want yep, people because I don't have any I don't have the answers and you know that's I, I really made a point in my film not to preach it's very it's very open ended a lot of stuff like no one's giving judgment you know like even between the characters a lot of people aren't saying whether something's right or wrong or, or laying down judgment it's more of like it's open ended and they kind of kind of touch on topics or, or controversial stuff but they don't really go into it mm -hmm. And the purpose of that is I want people to talk about afterwards. You know, they, they, they kind of set the stage. And when you leave the theater, you're like, oh, wow, you know, I didn't know, like, Korean businesses were affected or, wow. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 mean, I definitely <laughs> vaguely have the concept of that kind of stuff in my mind. But as I said, I was fairly young when that was all going on. But I do remember there, there, this interesting idea of, like, it's sort of a minority within a minority. And it's sort of like... I, the notion, like, I mean, this is something that is, like, very clear historically. I remember history teachers talking about, like, uh, during World War I, it is, or whatever, when the Nazis or the Germans would s use different cultural groups to separate each other. Obviously, Rwanda, for instance, is an, yeah. an area where these, these groups that you're like, I don't understand why you two are fighting against each other when you guys are facing a lot of the same problem yeah. situations. But it is a cultural thing. That is well, a I mean, it, it also goes, you know... It's a conversation of religion, you know, yep. it's a conversation of a lot, of, I mean, there's a lot of things to fight about, <laughs> you know. Unfortunately, yeah. instead of trying to combine. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a fascinating idea. The, one of the interesting things, and I'm gonna keep it vague so people can see the film and not be so surprised, but the, the idea of um, the ending. The ending is where sort of like, yeah, these groups have these very clear differences, at least in the course of the film, but there is a unification point where everyone seems to uh, fall on the same path and what was it like trying to find that as you shape the story because it's like clearly this is a, a charge story that's building to something it's like what did how difficult was it to be like clearly this is the thing that's going to be the point where things sort of go off or explode or this is the result of that explosion yeah and that's you know I mean because it feels like there could have been any number of different ways oh, yeah. like that this thing could have like yeah I mean off. that's that's where, you know, it is a character study, but it's also plot driven, you know, like loose plot, but like there is a plot. Oh yeah, there's definitely. And I think that is just structure, that's story structure. And, and um, I knew where I wanted to go. So, so that's that, like the first thing you're like, this is what I want to do, work yeah. backwards from there. And it, was, it wasn't necessarily like that cl clear, mm. cl clean cut where it's like, okay, I know, and then I could work backwards. It was just, you know, it's just like when you amp this up, now it affects this part, and then you just, it's just this huge balancing act. And <clears throat> for this film, it was uh, sort of how can I make it the most impactful and ha say something um, while also staying honest and true? Because, you know, a lot of films you're like, oh, come on, dude, that's just nuts, you know? And, and that was, you know, you know, and I think a lot of it is just the films that I'm influenced by, mm. the films that I like, you know, I don't like, uh, I mean, I love films that, you know, for example, I love Scandinavian film, and a lot of that is just, <clears throat> just real sort of, they pinpoint one thing, mm. and they have a huge conversation about it, you know, like I saw Rams, oh, yeah, you know, there's so many films I love, you know, but... I'm dying to see the square, you know, I'm a huge mm -hmm. fan of force majeure and, yeah, yeah. you know, the, you know, th that is all <clears throat> sort of, you know, it's so honest and well, it's, it's interesting to think it's, about, like, in yeah. terms of, like, when somebody would sit down and, like, look at this film, like, I don't think they would initially be like, this is influenced by a French film and some Scandinavian films, but yeah. that's kind of the beautiful thing about film is, like, yeah. it's sort of a culmination of 100 years of And, you know, yeah, like I said earlier, it's like you, you, you watch all these things and you are sort of this sort of glob yeah, of the things that you, things. yeah, of, of the things you take in, and it's funny to see how it gets sort of uh, regurgitated through one's personal art. Well, there's an interesting aspect to that, too, and uh, this is something, like, <laughs> the last few years I've been kind of trying to do as much as possible, and that's sort of go into films cold. Like, you're right, there absolutely is this amalgamation of all the stuff as the film's made, but I, I, in some ways it's almost more powerful to see a film like this completely cold, because literally... 
uh, I knew that you had done it, and I had known some of your previous work. So I was like, oh, I'm kind of curious to see what this is. Yeah. Um, but and I didn't really cool know thing. that much about it. But yeah. it's a very powerful film to walk yeah. out of and be like, wow, like that is not. But that's the cool thing is, you know, that. but that's also a conversation. I, I love this because that's also a conversation of the industry because what people know me from is what other people I mean, are, are the roles that are available mm -hmm. to me, and other people have written those roles, so I'm just trying to fit in where I get in where I fit in. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. where, like, I think that's a too short lyric. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, like, you know, like, I'm just, and, but this is, this is me. Yeah. This is my art. But, like, you know, as an actor, that is one of those things that you asked, w why, why? Uh, well, it's the need for me to express myself uh, unadulted, uh, unadulterated is this film. Um, but, you know, as an actor, I love helping, you know, the, to talk about collaboration to get making someone's vision come to life and being yeah. a part of that. But there's just different aspects, you know, and I think um, this is more along my taste, but it doesn't necessarily mean as an actor I'm like so... Gonna be otherwise I won't be working, sure. you know, and you know, and we were talking about Twenty One Over. I love that film. That film was awesome. I loved shooting that film. It was film. one of those things that, like, I mean, we're in Seattle, so there's yeah. definitely like, cultural significance too. I remember like my girlfriend works uh, on at UW, and like they would shut down the things, and everyone was like, "What is this for? What is this for?" Yeah, they're probably and, no yeah. so annoyed. Yeah. So like for years, people were talking about, "Is it this thing? Is it this thing? Is it this thing?" So it was and then it was like, some drunk like frat movie, you know? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. But uh, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. It is interesting to sort of see what one thing leads to another yeah. I guess like at a certain degree you can't but it is cool it, that's been the most kind of fun thing for me is they have a preconceived notion and it's just like that's also shows you know you may think you know somebody or you may think you know your favorite celebrity or actor or writer but you don't really know them you know and I think they had these preconceived I also did all the Twilight films mm -hmm. and a lot of them oh, were yeah. shot in the Pacific Northwest yeah, that's true yeah that's and, right. and they that. have this sort of idea of who I am as an artist and it's fun to see like they're like whoa oh, yeah I totally forgot about Twilight yeah but they're like you made this yeah. like they're like Eric York you made or Jeff Chang made this yeah, like what the funny. what the what the hell and that's kind of been the rewarding thing is like I'm like hey we're all a lot of different things no I, I think you're absolutely right when you talk about the pit notion of pigeonholing that's definitely something that like I definitely like when people go against type almost yeah. because it's almost more shocking one of the last things I want to ask you about though is sort of the notion of um, art versus commerce mm. for, especially for a film like this like this film you're absolutely right there's a lot of thought that's going to come out of the people seeing this but I don't know where that sort of falls on that spectrum of like success maybe it'll be yeah. like Titanic I don't know but like <laughs> it, it definitely feels like there's a bit of an uphill battle in terms of commercial aspect of it is that something that like you just do something because you're passionate about it and you don't really worry about that stuff or sort of where does it sort of come into your mind well you know I mean at least me personally I want to make films that people are gonna watch you know like and also like you know you want to fulfill a few different Almost purposes. Rewatch. I think that's yeah. the most interesting ones are the ones that you are compelled to rewatch. Yeah, and you know, this film especially, I think it has rewatchability because, you know, um, oh. there's a lot of things you don't pick up the first time around. And I think, and I think, you know, with this with this film there are commercial aspects to it and and you know like there's there's big moments in the well, film I mean there, there's the, there's the question of like do I think it should be big commercially is yeah. this something that I think but yeah yeah that's see? the question like, right that, like that's the thing is like are people willing to let their kids yeah. or whatever see something that might be perceived as provocative yeah. but it's actually very um, thoughtful and important for people to see like, yeah like that and that's the, the conversation I mean yeah. that's 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 sort of uh, sort of the, the fine balance and um, at least for me that is why I, I raised the financing the way I did privately instead mm -hmm. of going through a company because when I did go to companies uh, production companies the things they asked for uh, I can't even imagine. were nuts I mean I they didn't want you black and white you know they <laughs> they wanted um you know, like Did Vin Diesel play this role? Yeah, it's just like, and there's there's no stars in it. So th that is why I, I made it for the budget that I did. Uh, although, um, you know, I hope that, and it is an uphill battle. You're not you're not wrong there, but um, I think, uh, you know, if the right people see it and and people get behind it, there is possibility. But you know, it's just like that's sort of the debate, right? And I, in terms of why I made it and how I made it. 
I didn't care about any of that stuff. It's, it's the notion. It's the notion of the shell. Like people feel like they need to like shelter themselves so much now. Yeah. It's sort of like getting people outside of that shell to sort of explore or look at the world around them. It's yeah. Sort of. And if you can do that, like yeah, there's a massive potential there. But. Yeah. And this film is abrasive, you know, and and it's not for everybody. But like, I need to make this one for 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 myself and also um, what I want to say. And if you are interested in what I have to say, then maybe it's worth checking out. Um, but you know, I can get paid to direct something else, and that is where I'm like, okay, I'll play by your rules because this is more commerce driven, sure. and we and the and also the budget is bigger, so we need that that money comes from somewhere. It needs to be it needs to be uh, made back. So I'm like. That, that would be stupid for me on a film like that to fight <clears throat> the commercial aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, sure. But for this, I made it the way I did because <clears throat> the amount we have to make back <clears throat> is far less. <laughs> but it also, but then it allows also allows me to say the things I want to say. Very cool. So the film is Gook. Um, what should people do who want to find out more information or figure out when they can see it? Is there a website? Is there a schedule that people need to be aware of in terms uh, of I think the easiest way is follow me on, on Facebook and Instagram Good place to start, um, yeah. and Twitter. But mostly, I, I post most stuff on Instagram. Hmm. So that's okay. sort of where I'm driving all the traffic or Twitter. Um, but uh, we do have a Facebook uh, uh, page for it. But you know, it's funny because Facebook wouldn't give us a name for a long time because it's a racial <laughs> slur. Um, so that uh, you know, so um, we do have a Facebook uh, page. We do have a Twitter. Um, but I think the the best way is is to follow you. Yeah, follow me, and it's just my my name, Justin Chan, um, and my Twitter is also just Justin Chan. I guess I got in early. Very easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really nice and easy to remember. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for doing this, Justin. Uh, I definitely adv advise people to check out the film. It's really interesting and powerful, and definitely a thought provoking experience. So yeah. I wish you the best of luck with this thank and you. whatever's next. Absolutely. Thank you. Can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to buy the sound. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Rath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all